Keep going. Yeah, they're both toasted. Jesus. So this is what the LiPo battery looks like before it got burnt. Uh, this is a this is a battery I use for my drone. It has very high power, so that's why I wanted to use it for my e-bike controller. And if you go over here, this is my e-bike controller, and I'm doing some testing with some motors over here. So here, if I could just turn it on. So what happened was there was an issue and uh, it basically shorted the battery. And uh, before I had a breaker on it, but it was just a thermal breaker meaning it didn't shut off the short fast enough and the battery went into thermal runaway, meaning it's just gonna go on fire and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So that's why I'm gonna make this big battery so it can power this e-bike controller and not have any issues and also just use a fuse instead of a thermal breaker. So this battery is a 8S4P LiPo battery made from 26650 cells of an electric bus. Let's take a look. So in this video, I wanna take you through the process of making this battery from the 3D printed holders to the spot welding to making the box itself. I'll put a bill of materials and how long the project took and other information in the video in the description below. Let's get started. So this is my spot welder, it's called a K-Weld. It's different from other spot welders because it's an energy-based spot weld versus a time-pulsed base spot weld. So let's plug it in. Here you can set the amount of joules. I have some starting values here for different sizes of nickel strips. All right, now we just gotta glue the two halves together. Just for some structural integrity. So I would actually recommend not using hot glue because it dries a little too fast and it leaves gaps in the holders. Use another type of glue that doesn't dry so fast like epoxy or to find a way to keep everything hot while you put the holder together. The battery I'm making is gonna be an eight series four parallel battery. So that means eight groups in series, four cell parallel groups. So this is kind of like a diagram of how the battery is going to be laid out. So here you can see these big blue, um, thicker 
series connections between the groups and you can see one parallel group right here. So there's eight parallel groups in total with four cells each and they're all connected with these series connections. This is the top view and you can see the side view here which you can kind of see the cell uh, series grouping a little better. So here you have your bulk connection so that's the, the battery output basically. Uh, and you can see the series connections on the top, then on the bottom, top, bottom, etc. This nickel strip's rated at 8 amps continuous. Let's try welding this. So I'm going to try welding on top of these previous welds. I think it should be okay, but we'll see. So I spot welded with this uh, thickness before and I got about 30 joules as a starting point. So let's put it to 30. One thing I should have done when I put the cells together is orient all the previous spot welds so that it's easier to spot weld these other strips onto it. That feels pretty good to me. I'll set this side. So I'm putting the series connection strips on first so there's less resistance to the cell because the parallel connection isn't as important for current capacity because there won't be a lot of current uh, between the cells if it's a good match. So there's actually so much current going through that the wires create a really big magnetic field and you can kind of see them jump around when it welds. Yeah, just watch it. Okay, so I got this side done, and now I'm gonna do the other side. Put the first one down. Yeah, safety tap, yeah. Sanity check, no sparks, we're good. Okay, let's keep doing that. Okay, so the series connections is done on both sides. And I didn't short any cells, so we're good. Okay, now it's time to do the parallel connections with the nickel plated steel. Okay, so the parallel connections are all done. You can see here. And you might be wondering why there's less strips on this side. Well, I realized that actually it was kind of running low on the nickel plated steel. And I realized that you don't really need to have two parallel strips here because it's connected all together already through this one strip. And the parallel connections aren't really that important current wise. So this should be just fine. All right, what's the next thing to do? I guess um, we gotta put the bulk connections on the ends of the pack. So I'm gonna solder up some wire with that. So let's go upstairs. Okay, I got some 10 gauge wire here. These will be for the bulk connections of the battery. But first, let's tape up the terminal so we don't have any incidents. So I'm going to use some XT90 connectors. This is an anti-spark connector. So it's got a built-in resistor that contacts first so it can charge up the capacitors, whatever you're plugging it into, so it doesn't spark 
and then it goes to the real connection when you push it all the way in. So you want to make the connector first before connecting it to the battery because now it's a lot safer to work with. If you had done it the other way, you might have two leads which could be energized and you don't want to accidentally short them. Here it's in a nice connector, it's not going to short. So I'm going to start by putting the first uh, bulk connection on, the positive, and I'll just solder it to the nickel strips. So I tin both the wire and the nickel strip and now I'm just gonna combine them together. It's a little bit tricky. While I was heating up this connection, the other connection actually desoldered itself. But it's a good connection, it's got a nice fillet there. Uh, there's a bunch of flux in the way so it's kind of hard to see. Now just for the rest of them. Okay, one side done. Now for the other side. All right, the battery is basically done. Now we just want to do a quick sanity check on the voltage, make sure everything's right. Yeah, 20, about 26 volts and it's correct polarity. So I think we're all good. I'm gonna make a battery box using some ABS sheets. Let's see if this fits. Should be good enough. Okay, I got most of my pieces cut here for the box. So there are some rails here that should just keep the battery nice and uh, spaced properly in the box so that they don't move around. So I'll put those on first and then I'll put the rest of the box together. When you make the battery box, there's only a couple things you really need to worry about. You gotta make sure that the battery has a tight fit inside the box so it doesn't move around too much. That's why I put rails as spacers inside here. And the other thing is uh, when you do the walls, you gotta make sure to measure them like twice because some of the walls will have to be longer by uh, the thickness of the material. So what I would do is I would start with uh, two of the sides first, uh, cut those out, put them up, along the battery, then measure it, and then cut the other sides. 
that's how you have a battery that fits nicely uh, for the cap cap is pretty simple uh, it just simply goes over over the box so all the walls or all the sides are bigger than the box so again once you have the box made you can put your piece up to the box measure and cut and the other hard part is the clips what I did here for my clips there's two clips on the box you can see here it's just some 3d printed piece that I just glued on to this to the cap and there's a little latch there which is just a scrap piece of ABS so if you peel it up it just comes loose now you don't have to have this part as a 3d printed part you can just make this out of a ABS sheet and it's really simple to put the cap on because you just push it and it locks right in so the cap doesn't look that pretty because I just used whatever pieces I had lying around left if I wanted to make it look nicer I would have this all the same size and not just like some big cutout here and for the wires you're gonna have uh, some sort of cutout for the wires here pretty simple just like you just cut it out or just use the pieces smaller pieces you don't have to cut anything you just have to cut a little bit here really i put another spacer on the cap and with a little bit of a cutout for the battery that just keeps the battery spaced uh, spaced in the box laterally so it doesn't move around so i have the two rails inside and this spacer so the battery doesn't move around in the box i also sanded the edges of the box just so it's not so sharp pretty easy to do you can use a knife or you can use a belt sander or just sandpaper i hope you enjoyed or learned something from this video i will be doing more videos about other projects i'm working on like stat track for tabletop games 3d printed holders the k wad spot welder and more please leave a comment below on what you would like to see me do next Thanks for watching and have a nice day.